Hello, everybody. Hello, friends. Welcome in. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yay. Welcome to another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And like she said, here we are. Yeah. First day of 2020. 2020. Pretty cool. Yes. I feel good about this one. Yes, I do too. I think it'll be a good year. We've said that before. Yeah. And I guess everyone has their ups and downs. Yeah. But I don't know. Overall, I have a good feeling about this. Yeah. It's a good double number. You know, it really is what you make of it because there's going to be downs in every year. Yeah. Every year. So, I don't know. Good years, bad years. I, I don't know. Can you really say one year is better than the other? I mean, I've had years that have stood out. Yeah. Right. But for the most part, they all have their ups and downs, I think. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Knock on wood. This is going to be a good one. I think so. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, so we're doing episode 38 yes. today. And what is our topic? This is question and answers with the Joneses. Cool. Q&A. Q&A. With the Joneses. Yep. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Okay. But before we jump into that, did you have anything from last week? Last week was episode 37, which was the 2020. Yes. Yes. I was afraid for third. <laughs> Yes, that was a good episode. I enjoyed it. We had good feedback from it. Um, but there were some questions. I'm going to do that in the episode because it kind of instead flows. Instead of recapping. With, uh, exactly. Makes sense. Cool. So instead, what I wanted to say is that we're dedicating this show today to my grandmother, Kitty, who died exactly three years ago today. Yep. Um, she Hi, was Kitty. A wonderful woman. Yes. She's with us all the time, yeah. just not physically anymore. But she's you missed know? physically. She taught me something. Well, she taught me a lot of things. But the last lesson that she taught me leaving this life, I feel was important because I always felt like even numbered years were bad years. I've told you this before. It seemed that everybody yep. died in even numbered years. Everyone. So my grandmother went out on the first day of an odd numbered year. And I felt like that was her way of saying, see, things happen no right. matter what year it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just superstition. Superstition. Right. So I'm not going to go into 2020 thinking that. But you're not the only one that I've heard that says that, you know. I, yeah, we all have our superstitions, but it's definitely <clears throat> time to let it go. Cool. Yeah. So, I think it's a good Anyways, idea. love you. My Kit Kat. Miss you. Kitty. Yeah. Nice. So, anyways, that's what I got for you. I figure we'll go cool. right into the episode. Let's do it. Okay. Episode 38, Q&A with the Joneses. Q&A with the Joneses. So I broke this up a little bit. The first part that I did, I wanted to kind of touch on uh, questions that listeners maybe had from previous episodes or questions for us in general about ourselves, you know, whatever, that kind of thing. Right. So I have a lot here. I don't think I'm going to get to all of it, but we'll see what we get to. Okay. So I want to start with this one. What does it feel like to connect to the other side? And do you think everyone can do it? I definitely think everyone can do it. I think yeah. it's just a matter of believing in yourself and having the patience to build it. There's nothing right. special about me. The question was, what does it feel like? What does it feel like? Yeah. And can every, anybody do it? Well, a big part of, I think, that the faith is involved is that it doesn't really feel any different than just life itself. So you have to believe that the messages or the feelings and the certain thoughts that you're getting or signs, that that is indeed what's going on. Right. When I do a reading, like if I connect to somebody's loved one, I almost check out. Uh, so if you are saying, what does it feel like in that sense? Like when I do readings, I, I do, I check out, I, I just go, I type cause most of my stuff is done through text or whatever. Right. Um, when I'm on the phone, it's kind of the same thing. It just starts coming out when I do readings. It just, I don't know how to explain it. It's like this being plugged in is the only way I can explain it. It's like a feeling of just had this connection right. and they take over. It's, it's a very cool feeling. It's really neat that you could do it just at will. That's what I find rather. I mean, it's, the whole thing is yeah, enormously intriguing. But 
just that, you know, I can just boom. It took me a while to learn how to do that, to be able to just do it whenever I wanted to. The first night, it was so strong that I went to bed really worried that I, it was never going to go away and I wasn't going to be able to turn it off and on. I think that right. was like one of the first things, the first battles that I had to conquer was right. you can turn, gosh, that was so long ago, it feels like. It, you can turn yeah. it off and on when they yeah. started teaching me that. Wow. And now it's just, it's second nature to me. It just, right. you know, it, so... Yeah. If you practice, I definitely think anybody can do it, and I think you can get to that same point. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I agree. So yeah, good question. The next one is: When you found out about your gift, who did you tell? Were you nervous when you discovered it? I didn't want anybody to know. <laughs> yeah, you did. I was like, "Ooh, ready, <laughs> set. Who can we tell?" Yeah, I got so, him on speed dial. I started by telling like really close friends like or my, like my brother my mom's best friend people that i knew that maybe like oh okay but right. wouldn't run for the hills right you know um and then just slowly over time i started feeling more and more comfortable and feeling like well if this is how i'm gonna live my life then i can't i can't hide it i can't no. not be me and so I just started, to, you start to get to the point where it becomes part of your life. Right. There's still people that, like, I don't, it's not written on my forehead or anything. If you see me around town, you're not going to know. But, you know, if you know me on Facebook or, or that kind of thing, then, right. you know, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, were you nervous when you discovered my, my abilities? Um, I was very stressed at first. I think we both were. It was very new. It was very overwhelming. But the stress yeah. level and the nervousness definitely toned down after a while, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even happening to me, but I could feel like the, whoa. Because I think you could drive yourself insane if you were trying to hide it. Mm -hmm. You know, but the fact that you're just like, oh, I got to I gotta be me. I got to. Right. Yeah. And look what it's turned out to be. Exactly. I felt that from the beginning when you said that. I was like. Phew. Yeah. Because Lula, I had been, what? I, right, I had been selling LuLaRoe and it just wasn't going my way. And, you know, looking for that, what am I going to do next? And it's almost like it smacked me across the face. Yeah, it did. Like most people, when they, if they learn about this, they might not think, oh, you should start a business. You should start doing readings. It was like one of the first thoughts, <laughs> you know. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm the one with the cold this week. Oh, we, we both yeah. still have it a little bit, but... Yeah, <laughs> so I have a little terrible, bit of a terrible one, but never fun. I apologize for that. Yeah, um, this one you and I have talked about a little bit. Why are we taught to be afraid to die? Yeah, well, I think I gotta be honest. I think that comes from uh, the whole sin thing and the being forgiven and where you're going. Yes, after death, mm -hmm. I think that for a lot of people that came up with some sort of religion or, you know, is that the truth really kind of thing? Right. I think something that we have a hard time remembering is that just because we don't know what goes on on the other side doesn't mean it's not real. If everything that was going on there was going on here, what would be the difference? Right. Does that make sense? So if we all mm. knew what was going to happen when we died, we would all fear life or fear death a lot less. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there's other things that it might trigger. It might trigger some people to not be the good people that they are because religion keeps them under control. True. Um, that unfortunately that is something mm. that happens. Right. Not everybody takes this knowledge and does good with it. So I definitely think that's one reason, maybe not why we're taught to, fear it so much, but why we're not necessarily taught um, about all of this. Not every, this is not knowledge to everybody. It's right. not, you know, it could be, but it's not. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I have to think about the people that aren't religious, that maybe don't believe that there's anything at all afterwards. Do they fear it? Or is it just, maybe it's the fear of, oh, because this is going to end and then there's nothing left after right. that. So... I don't think we talk about it enough. We don't. You know, about what, what, in a non-religious sense. Like right. That. What comes next. Yeah, what comes next. Because it is hard to not use religion, I think, in that text. 
So some people just choose not to believe anything. It's just lights out. And right. and I think those are the ones that I feel the most sorry for because what do you think about with your life? What are you aiming towards? What's the goal? That's, right. you know, if it's lights out, I don't know. For me, for me, the goal is to get through this life and to be the type of person I was born to be and to help people so that when I go to the other side, I'm I, a step up from right. where I was the last time. Right. So if I didn't have that belief... You know, I was, thought there was nothing. I don't know. That would be sad. I really hope that the next time around that I, you know, I, I, I say I want to, I want to remember, you know, yeah, this part of this life so I can understand that connection. I know. Me too. Sooner. It would be nice. Know? Yeah. But, but imagine if we all went around knowing everything about our past lives, we would be so messed up in the oh, head. Oh, yeah. It would be, it would no. be very chaotic. But. Yeah. If there was just some way you knew, but I don't know how that is. Uh, I guess just like I figured it out, I, I always felt it in there, and I just finally brought it forward. Yeah. You know? I'll tell you, you don't need to be afraid to die. No. Not of what happens afterwards. I mean, we all no. fear the actual process itself. There's nothing you can do about that. Although we will do... Um, an episode about Dolores Cannon, maybe even a couple. And she talks about how you remove yourself from your body before you die. So you don't actually feel the pain. You can, it's yeah. up to you. You could choose to feel it. You could choose yeah, not to true. feel it. It's, yeah. it's a personal thing. Um, like I quite honestly believe Christ left his body long before he died. Yes, absolutely. I, when my grandma died, I she was in the same state for a few days, just laying in bed, you know, it, the same right. position, everything, except we were moving her. So it was for me seeing that I had like I had never seen that. And I'm thinking, what kind of pain is she dealing with right now? Is she asleep? Is she already mm -hmm. on the other side? Right. And it's a relief for me now to know that she wasn't there in that body. And actually, when I got to the house after she had passed, I kept hearing I've talked about this before repeating it in my head it's just a shell it's just a shell and i realize now that that was already the other side talking to me and trying to put that into my head to remind me yeah it's just a shell right whatever pain she was experiencing maybe in there it's gone she's it's gone don't dwell on it you know that yeah. kind of thing so. yeah i mean because we're talking about a different dimension that's not yeah. physical so exactly it's gone there's 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 no pain. Right. There's no, you know, you can't burn. Yeah. Because there's no pain. Right. So everything that physically that's possible here is not happening there. Right. Um, but I think it's probably the most extraordinary place ever. Oh, yes. And we will definitely do an episode. Somebody had recommended that, that we do an episode about like the healing, the temples and all of that mm -hmm. on the other side. So we'll definitely do an episode. And the different levels. Yeah, the different levels yeah. of, of heaven. Yeah. Next question is for you. Uh-oh. Let's see. This says, while playing music or painting, have you ever felt influenced or guided by the other side? Definitely. Often. I've seen it happen. Yeah, often. Mm -hmm. I have an uncle that passed away, and he was the only other, um, well, I shouldn't say the only other. There's two other people that were artistic in my family. I am related to Woody Guthrie um, and Arlo Guthrie. Could they're my grandmother's dad and her, their dad were brothers. Mm -hmm. So Woody Guthrie was a songwriter and a painter. He was never really wealthy, famous. He died pretty poor, kind of sad story. Mm -hmm. But he's known for this is this land is our land. Yeah. Uh, song, which is America's song, embraced yeah. that song like as our own. Yeah, for sure. So he was artistic. Then my mom's brother was artistic. So often when I'm painting, I'll feel this, what I used to think was a thought, you know, like, a, mm -hmm. hey, I should do this. But it starts to be a nagging. Like, don't forget to do that. That's exactly right. Are you going to do that? <laughs> Are you still thinking about doing that? <laughs> And you, I hate that. you're like, okay, okay I guess fine. I better do that. Shut up. Yeah. Because they're not going to shut up about it. No, they don't. They do that so, in a lot of things, but yeah. <laughs> definitely with the art and definitely with the music. I feel like um, 
I really set out this time with my music to try to write something uh, that sounded a bit familiar, like vintage, but all original. Yeah. So I feel like, and I have friends, you know, that have passed that I've played music with. So yeah. And and greats that I I worship. I think not worship, but you know, really look up to. And I think that you can channel some of their energy and some of their vibe right. just by trying. Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah, for sure. I see it happen. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Okay, next question. How does one practice spiritualism or any metaphysical activity? And I so spiritualism is basically if we wanted to categorize ourselves as a religion, what we would be considered. We don't like to use the word religion with it because yeah, it's not. Just, it's not at all. We don't have a congregation or a preacher or a chapel or, or but temple. I, I mean, yeah, I don't know, like. I don't know how to describe how our lives have changed in that way. It takes time. You can't just snap your fingers and all of a sudden you're spiritualist or, you know, it takes time. You have to do research, read about if this is the lifestyle for you, if this is the way that you want to live. Do you feel your loved ones on the other side? Do you believe the same kinds of things that we talked about? It's if you've ever like chosen a religion, because I've done that a couple of times, like where do you start? Well, maybe you go to church. There are spiritualist church, um, spiritual yeah. centers. Yeah. But you can do a lot of research online, go on Facebook and join some metaphysical groups and just start learning, I, I suppose. It was a slow process for us, and it's a continuing process mm -hmm. to, you know, really fulfill this life. But I was telling you a while back that I feel like, you know, how there's people that are like handed over to Jesus and you hear them say that that's mm -hmm. me now. I'm like handed over to the universe. It's right. become a normal part of my life and what I talk about. Right. So really, it's I think it's just right. time. You know learning. what? Honestly, if <clears throat> if it's the universe, if it's Jesus, uh, if it's a big giant oak tree in your backyard, it could be whatever. Because ultimately, those are all energies of – that we're all one, essentially. Yes. So you're just acknowledging something greater and more divine than yourself. Jesus was a part of that equation. So is the oak tree in your backyard. Yes, exactly. So it doesn't really matter. What you're doing is putting faith in something. Yes. Belief in something that it's not just you put on this little ball mm -hmm. floating in this giant vacuum. Yep. And there's, you know, lions and tigers and dangerous things going on. And you're just left to uh, to work, sleep and eat and try to survive. It's it's so much more than that. Yes, it certainly is. That was a good question. That was. Yeah. OK, let's see. Next question. This one's for me. Do you get drawn to read people in public? Um, occasionally when I first started, I felt like they would throw little things at me when we were out about people. There was one night, I don't know if you remember this, we went out to eat presto pasta mm -hmm. and we walked in and I got a sense of that this girl played a sport and I thought that it was <clears throat> soccer, I believe. Um, and I, it was, this was at the very beginning when I was just learning to use my abilities and didn't really have a lot of people to practice on. So w the girl actually came to our table and you asked her, do you play a sport? And she she said, yes, that she played a sport on the level that I was saying she did, but not the same sport. But so I get those kinds of things in public lately. I feel like I see auras around people that may have loved ones that are like, you know, you could help this person. Um, sometimes I will get that little tap on the shoulder. Uh, but I I'm I don't really have that nerve to talk to people yet like that it's very difficult yeah i mean and i would always we've talked about this before because maureen said she made the mistake of doing that yeah and then somebody else i don't know if it was on television show said i always ask now that's are, the long island medium okay I think, are yeah. you willing to hear a message because yeah some people might look at you like you're totally insane and get offended and maybe even threaten you and that's not worth no, it's not. You're no. I will approach health. people like um through Facebook if I see somebody that may be struggling, I'll reach out to somebody through mm -hmm. Facebook because what's the worst they're going to do? They're going to block me. Mm -hmm. 
in public, I don't want to deal with that. So that, yes, I do a lot of times have a pull. There's actually one girl, I believe she listens to the podcast. Her name's Desiree. And her husband died last year um, from diabetes, but he also had migraines. So she was in the migraine group, one of the groups that I was in, and oh. said that her husband had died. Uh, and so I reached out to her and invited her to our group, and we're now friends on Facebook. Oh, cool. So I do have those kinds of things more often than when we go out in public. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I, I, I like to keep my life separate from this work, too, so I try not to do a lot of stuff when I'm out. I just yeah. focus on my life. I Unless I got that push that, you know, well, yes, kind of course, how it happens yeah. for me artistically or whatever. It's this this nag, you yes. know, like when uh, you did a, ro a reading for Jolie and, and that that was wild because for days I was just getting yeah. bugged and bugged. Like you need to reach out to her and tell her that Samantha will talk to you, talk to her if she wants to, you know. Yes. And I kind of wanted to ignore it and it, they just kept. Bugging me, and well, I know it was Richard bugging yes, me. Her, her husband. Yeah, yeah. her ex, or her deceased, deceased husband. husband. Yeah. So, and then, then again, it happened recently with the friend that I mentioned last episode, I believe, who lost her daughter. Yeah. To an OD, and that I've been watching this kind of happen for the last week or so, and mm -hmm. feeling this nudge, and I was like. Okay, I'm going to put myself out there again. You get that more than I do. And, yeah, for sure. You know, like, I'm going like to feel recruiter. like a nut, you know. <laughs> People are going to think I'm a nut, but hey, I can't ignore it if I see it in pain. And I um, I didn't know her daughter, but I, I'm assuming that that's the push is coming from her daughter. Right. So Yeah, I believe you're right. Let's see. What is the next one? This is a good one. It says, we want to know more about the Joneses. Where did you meet and how long have you been married? <laughs> I thought that was cute. I don't, we guess we haven't talked about this on the show before. Yeah, no. No. Pro, what, 1994? Four. Mm -hmm. I played um, in a band at that time also. And I worked in Westlake uh, at a sandwich at Subway. Mm -hmm. Um and you lived in the area, and her boyfriend at the time, who ended up becoming her husband, um, worked with me yep. at Subway. And he was a big fan of our band. So, and we actually hung out as couples yeah. with who was my girlfriend at the time and became my wife, now my ex wife, and now yeah. your ex husband. So yeah, then we, all we went got. To Lollapalooza. Yeah, we hung out. And then times. fast forward, you guys moved away. Yeah. About what, 96, 97? We moved to 95. 95. Yeah. Um, and the band fizzled about, yeah, probably about that, 95 or 96. And you guys moved away for 15 years. And yep. then your grandmother got ill. Yep. So you had to move back to be her caretaker. And we got reconnected on social media. Yeah. I was sure going did. through a separation at about 2011. Yeah. And you were doing the same thing really yeah we both ended up going through our divorce at the same time actually i think mine was finalized almost a year to the day before yours was mm -hmm. it's yeah very it was very weird how the timelines lined right. up on that so yeah we i just remember you going danny jones from contradiction <laughs> and i said yeah yeah but you had black hair and i knew you with blonde hair yeah. so i didn't even recognize it yeah it was to recognize you but yeah, yeah that's how we met yeah here we are. Here we are. And then, how, yeah, we've been married. Actually, it'll be three years um, on the 11th yep. of January. We got married at Disney World. Yep. We had my brother ordained and went on family vacation. And yeah, it we was broke the law. My, you know what? That is um, I was thinking about this earlier when I when I read this question, that that is a really good key point on making your dreams come true, because I, as a kid, always dreamed about getting married at Disneyland. Like, come on. I, a huge right. Disney fan. Who wouldn't, right? Right. So I looked into it for my first wedding, and the price was just insane. Like, you can't do that, right? So then with you, it was like, you know what? I'm going to look at this from a different angle because we, we're going to go to Disney World. Like, how about if in Disney World we get married, but we have our own wedding? And you went for it. And so the point that I'm trying to make is that I didn't get the dream, dream, dream Disney wedding. 
but what I got was more than I ever imagined I would ever get. Yeah. If you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be getting married at Disney World, the one, the top bucket list place for me to go and then to get married there. But I had to compromise. Right. If I would have been like stuck to my guns of no, I want the Disney wedding or I don't want that at all. We'd still be paying for that. I, what would be the point? Yeah, you know, ridiculous. I was f- almost 40 when we got married. I don't need, you know, Cinderella's castle or nothing. <laughs> it was perfect. I wore leggings and we had matching shirts. It was beautiful. That's so funny. Yeah. So anyway, there's there's the long answer to your question. So, there it is. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Let's see. What other questions do we have? Um, you are obviously music lovers, but what are some of your favorites? well i will tell you that i love all kinds of music Mm -hmm. but i and i thought i had a well-rounded music library until i met you because (laughs) he loves everything that's why the the, it's so interesting it's yeah because you really can't even answer this question it's hard i don't know i mean i used to when we first started dating i called a lot of your music old man music so did marina and now it's rubbed off on both (laughs) of us and she loves the older stuff yeah you know? I'm not that into a lot of new, like, not even say newer music, but real heavy, you know, yeah. just constant double bass and, you know, thrashing guitar. It's not my style, but hey, to each his own. I do like a lot of older music. Yes. Um, anywhere from my mom used to torture me with, you know, curlers and bandana wrapped around with the windows down, <laughs> driving around K Earth 101. This is back when K Earth did not play Van Halen, by the way. Wait, K Earth plays way more. K Earth 101 Halen. used to play oldies but goodies, and that was like the 50s, the the, the doo wops, and yeah, you know that kind of stuff. Uh, they and don't play that. Anymore. They don't play that anymore. So you know you're getting old when K Earth's now playing Van Halen in Boston. Classic rock, yeah. second generation they call it. But I like a lot of newer artists too. You know, the, yeah. The, kind of pull from some of that stuff but i love all kinds of music yeah it's really hard for me to say but yeah. i typically like rock and roll and and you know yeah but i'm, I, I'm the lover. same way i really i love billy eilish she's, she's i think great. she's going places i love her music it's very unique i've always been a big fan of ben harper or ray la montaigne yes. for people that kind of came up from more of a independent artist or you know and but that was something that I had never been exposed to, both of those two. And and now I love them. We went to see Ben Harper and right. I meditate to Ray LaMontagne. Good but stuff. as far as guitar players, you know, I probably Hendrix, Keith Richards, and um, Jimmy Page are probably my three biggest influences. Yeah. You know, in the stuff that I try to play. So, yeah. yeah. So that's it. That's a good question. I love Pink Floyd. That's like you one do. of my favorites. Yeah. That's like your one of your big meditation songs. Mm-hmm. And Aerosmith, Steve Miller band. Um, yeah. I I love it all, but as far as I like the I prefer the older stuff too. Yeah. Not so much the newer stuff. There's only a few people. So let's see. There was a question. I didn't want to read the whole thing. Um, because I I I do want to talk to this person in private if they know who I'm sure they'll know who I'm talking about. So I'd rather you just message me because it was a question, a personal question about children and what other psychics had predicted. But the main part of the question was um, if your children are determined before you're reincarnated. So do you pick how many children you're going to have? Is it predetermined? Um, I think that we all determine what, we're going to do in this life if yeah i would say but i do believe that um there are certain things that may not go as the the way they're supposed to so there are alternatives Mm -hmm. um for example i saw a psychic we've talked about highland a few times that told me that i could have two kids that they were waiting for me a boy and a girl but i didn't have to have them i didn't want kids i really didn't and it actually worked out perfectly because Danny has right. a daughter, so it was almost you weren't like as it was much meant into the baby aspect, the, the infant. That's the part you didn't necessarily have a problem with kids. No, not at all. You just didn't want that, and the so drool in the diapers. There's and, a yeah. huge, um, you know, 
uh, if you want to call it irony, to that and the fact that when I got separated, I thought, you know, in one of your moments of despair of like, am I going to be alone for the rest of my life? If just bring me somebody that will love me and my kid like it was their own, yeah, you know, and so not only was it somebody I already knew that I didn't have to, tr- meaning you, yeah. that I didn't have to try to prove myself to or be somebody I was or wasn't. Right. They already kind of knew who I was somewhat. And you do. You treat her better on some levels. You know, you treat her like you're your, she's your own. Right. You know, our kid. Maria. Yeah, absolutely. I love her like she's my own. And I think that that was maybe not prearranged for me. Maybe I had that option that if, like Hyland had said that if I wanted to have these two kids, I could, but I didn't. And so I feel like Marina, you had Marina with your ex-wife and that that was maybe what that child was. Mm-hmm. It's very possible. Yeah. Um, if you don't have those children that are predetermined like that for you, it's not like their soul goes away. They're just born into a different, you know, in right. a different way, maybe somebody else in your family. Right. Um, so I believe to a certain extent it might be predetermined, but I still think that there's those different, you know, there's free will. There's those well, different Well, you're ways. an amazing role model to her, and it's something that she needed in her life. So it fit, the, the pieces fit. Yeah, you definitely. Know, what, what the callings. No, it was perfect. It worked yeah. out perfectly. So I guess that's another point, too, that even if you feel like one certain way, like... I need to have kids of my own or I don't want to have kids at all. Not that I said I didn't want to have kids at all. When I got divorced, this was the kind of situation I was looking for to somebody that already had a child so that I didn't have to have one of my own to have that kind of connection. So don't discount it. You know, if you, know, you it's a stepchild, you don't have your own, you can't have one, you know, whatever it is, your life's going to play out in the way that you've, most likely predetermined it. You just have to go with it. And if mm-hmm. you don't push things in the direction they're not supposed to go down, then you may just get what you want in the end in the way you want it mm-hmm. in a way you didn't realize you want it. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> Where's another question you for you? Because my cold's catching up. Yeah. Let's see. This one says, is Danny a full-time musician and artist? Yep. I am. He sure is. It has been a nice career change. For yeah, him. I'm not a millionaire, but that's well, no, nobody. That's what I do. Yeah. Okay. I had to take a little sip because I'm having a little tickle from my cold. I'll hold it together. It's fine. <laughs> okay. The next one: Are zoo animals happy? This is an interesting question because that is a good one. Just like saying, "Are people happy?" You're generalizing. I can't tell you all zoo animals are happy. I can tell you that I have been in situations, not big zoos, knowing about these abilities. I mean, I've always talked to animals, but I've never really gone to a zoo and like sat and talked to the animals Right. until I went to that, um, the sloth yoga. And I talked to a lot of the animals there. This is like a conservation facility. And something that I started to realize because I was down on zoos for a while myself But most of these places, especially nowadays, they're not looking to show off these animals to you. They're not looking to put on a circus or anything like that. They're taking animals that, for one reason or another, couldn't survive in the wild on their own or maybe endangered. Yeah, it's like a. Yeah, exactly. It's like rescue, but for wild animals. Um, You know, is it their natural environment? No, but most of them do have something that prevents them from being out in the wild on their own. Which is good. Yeah. At least then they do have a home and they're not, you know, kind of at the mercy of other predators. Something that's important to remember with animals, too, and this this is something I have to remind myself about, is that, and I'm not saying a abuse situations or anything like that. But when an animal is born into a situation, they don't know any differently. So if you have an animal that's a wild animal that's born in captivity, they do have instincts for, you know, being wild, of course, but they don't know any different than being in captivity. So you can't just take that animal and release it. So, you know, there's... It's hard for me when I see people that maybe don't treat their animals the way that we do, 
but I realize that that's life and that those animals, they, that is what they know. And for them, it's, it is normal life. It right. doesn't make it a hundred percent right. But anyways, about the zoos. Don't... I don't think they're looking at it like somebody that's incarcerated in San no. Quentin. They're not, they don't rationalize it like us no i'll tell you they actually really enjoy watching us yeah there were some monkeys when i did the sloth yoga there were some monkeys to my right and they really were enjoying just sitting there watching us do the yoga so these animals is although we think that we're observing them they are also observing us so and they do communicate between each other so who knows what they're talking about oh yeah <laughs> I, yeah I did have somebody that suggested that I go to zoos and interview animals. And that is a very interesting thing. I've never thought about that before. Like to go to a zoo and say, I'm going to talk to this giraffe and then just write down everything that I get from the giraffe and then come back on the show. And yeah, that'd be cool. That Wouldn't that be cool? That yeah. was a great idea. Whoever said that, by Do the it. way. Yeah. Speaking of goals. One question we got is, what is your ultimate goal for this show? Honestly, I don't to think... To help people. Yeah. We don't really have a set goal. Um, I really just, like you said, we want to help people. We want to spread this kind of information to people. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're just trying to get ourselves out there. We're not looking to be rich and famous and make millions of dollars. I think no. that this is a great platform for me to get out there to be able to do readings for other people. Yeah. So I guess it's really just as a platform too, to help with our other things as well. You know? Yeah. It's really, it's, we're just trying to, um, give. Yes. You know, in a world that feels like it's a lot of take and where's mine. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to try to get out of myself for one hour you know, yeah, a week on the show, and that's just for the show. But to to do something because I do believe that when we sit down and we start talking, um, a lot of the things that come out of my own mouth and Samantha's, I'm supposed to hear. Yes, and they're important. So it's is it necessarily channeling? I don't know, but it's they're speaking through they're us. Speaking they're through they're us, helping yeah. us to help others. Just like others help me. Yes. And so it's this, I apply, I apply the same sort of concept or idea when it comes to my art or music that I just hope that somebody heard a note or a song or a melody in yes. there that made them feel good and made their toes tap and wanted to sing along or they saw a picture and thought, man, that just evoked an emotion in me and made me think. Yes. That. There's something bigger, you know, there's something more divine than, than just this physical world. Yes. So for me, I, I really like to focus a lot on the animals and spreading awareness on proper pet care. And, and that is definitely a goal with this for me is that if I can do that, if I can change the lives of some animals, then I've succeeded with the show. Right. Yeah. And, and I think it's part of our journey of also trying to better ourselves as humans. Oh yeah. Like, you know, I'm not saying that we were out raping, raping and pillaging and <laughs> looting and robbing and burning. We weren't doing those things. No. Um, but you know, I wasn't perfect. Well, we're still not perfect. And I'm not perfect but, now, yeah. but, but I've made a conscious choice to, tr to be different, Yeah. to try to change and evolve. Absolutely. And age gracefully. This show, I think if you go back and listen to the first few episodes, you'll even see what this show has done for us on the spiritual level. It really has. We've grown so much through yeah. this time, and that has been a blessing for sure. Yeah, because it affects show, every yeah. facet, you know. It does. Our our relationship, our marriage, Yep. our relationship with our kid, Yep. and our friends. Um, yeah, So absolutely. Let's see. Okay, so I one of the questions that I asked was if anybody wanted me to predict anything for the coming year. And I had a couple of questions that were in the same similar ballpark, but I'll give you the funny one first. Oh, uh, okay. When is someone going to assassinate the giant orange Cheeto? <laughs> 
I, I think I know who asked that I question. I think I do, too. Oh, God. I think I do, too. Um, I got a, a, a few people that asked the same thing. Um, who's going to be the next president? And when is Trump going to be out of office? And I honestly, I, I can't go there. I would love to. Yeah. But we're talking about a very sensitive subject. And the FBI men in my phone are always listening. Yeah. I just don't feel comfortable going yeah. there. Have I made a prediction? Yes. My husband knows what it is. It's in my prediction book. Um, if it happens, we will say so afterwards. All I can say is keep on keeping on. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Not we'll... everybody likes Cheetos. Some like Doritos. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But thanks for it's the all question. Our, your, our own personal <laughs> taste, right? Uh... <laughs> okay. Will there be public disclosure about ETs? Um, eventually. Yeah. In our lifetime and uh, like mine and Danny's lifetime, I don't think so. I, I don't know. I don't think so because I feel like this, th- these generations here cannot handle it. It would be mass right. chaos. Yes. Uh, and our government knows that. Right. Part of, um, part of what we're doing is what, you know, is light work and, you're trying to help enlighten people about this universe and how magical and amazing and, and powerful it is, but it's very vast. Yeah. And it's very ignorant. I think for us to believe that we are alone in it. Yeah. Um, so therefore, yeah, I think it's inevitable. It's going to happen, but part of what has to happen is globally. People need to start opening their minds. Yes. They, and this is the new age of enlightenment. There was a previous age of enlightenment and that was followed by the dark ages right. where they started to shut all this information and this connection and this, this knowledge down Yes. and stifle it and hide it. It's now coming back. Yep. And when you see this start globally happening on a huger scale, um, it will happen. Yeah, it will. But again, I don't think in our lifetimes. And it, it doesn't have to be panic. I don't think it will be panic. No, it won't at that point. It no. would now. It would now. That's if that why kind of stuff be. came out now, mm-hmm. yeah, it would be. It wouldn't be good. No. But I'll tell you, from a psychic standpoint, there's a lot out there that we know nothing about. Right. Yeah. And they're not out there. They're here. As far you know. Yeah. As far as I know, absolutely, they're already here. Yeah. Um. This is a good question for you. What is it like to be married to a psychic? Is she always in your head? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, she's not. No, I don't no. want to be in his head. I mean, sometimes you'll pull cards in the morning or something for yourself. Like, mm-hmm. wonder what today might have in store. Right. And they might be correct on issues if we have a spat or a disagreement or something. Yeah. But um, not. No, typically you're not. No. And we're pretty normal marriage i'd say yeah i don't think well that i don't know if we're not normal, we're not normal but <laughs> yeah definitely not we but communicate I don't... yes well yes this has taught us to communicate um i don't play games with my abilities i'm not you know like that type of thing we're very open and we we talk about everything and and this has taught us that right and so yeah i guess for me that was important was to keep things, even though we're not a normal family, quote unquote, so that it was not like, I don't know, like bewitched. You know what I mean? Like they were a little bit abnormal. I want, you know, a little bit normal life, psychic, but right. normal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, bewitched. I don't know if you could compare it to that. But No, that's why I said it's not. Yeah. 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 But so. I don't, I don't think that, no, I'm not in your head. No, not. That's for sure. So let's see. This is a good one. Uh, my dad told me through a medium that he wanted a beer and not a girly one, a man's beer. Why would he say that? Do they joke? Yeah. So this is, this is, there's a few things that could be happening here. First of all, when they try to communicate through a medium, they're telling us things about themselves so that you know that we're actually connecting with exactly. them. Exactly. So telling you this is, if that's his personality, if he didn't like the sissy beers, that's him telling you, this is me, I'm here. Right. It doesn't mean that he wants a beer on the other side. It's just showing right. you that that's what he likes. Exactly. Their personality there is the same as it was here. Mm-hmm. 
It, My, I, I won't. It's not the same, but say, they present it yeah, a lot. It, the they same. show it the same, so you'll recognize them. Yes. My mother was very sarcastic. I compare compare her to Roseanne, um, and she still shows herself that way to me a lot. Um, just so that I know that it's her as opposed to other spirits that may be coming in. Yeah. I know that um, she's not, you know, when she says stuff to get my attention, like we used to call each other stupid. Like she'll call me stupid. And no, she doesn't mean it mean. She's right. just trying to get my attention and show me that it's her. That type as of thing. As opposed to your own thought. Exactly. Right. Then I know that it's her. Right. Yeah. So they do try and keep those things, those same personality things to show you that it's them. But really... Um, it's, my mom's not that sarcastic type of cynical person she used to be. Right. She's very pure. That's just how she's presenting sometimes, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. You're, you're like the best version of yourself. So even the yes. meanest, angriest person, those people still have, could be funny or have, you know, certain qualities about them that made them unique despite their anger and their other issues. So they're going to present those types of traits right minus the bad because they're the the purest version their soul you know right in that state there right okay let's see next question can people reincarnate to be animals and vice versa i don't believe so no uh, no i believe you stay with whatever you are um I do believe that, like, a dog could be a cat or something else. I don't think they necessarily have to stay that particular animal. Right. Um, I've had ferrets. I had ferrets long, many, many, many years ago that I believe have reincarnated. Um, but you're not going to be, like, person to dog. No. Or there was somebody that uh, said that they talked to a medium that said that she was once a rock. And I was like, no, no, no. No, you weren't a rock. Don't. No. no. Mm -mm. Because rocks could last a very long time. Exactly. Long. And not, I mean, you have eternity, essentially, but think of it in different levels of energy. Yes. You know, like one light bulb might be a 60 watt light bulb, and the other light bulb is a 25 watt. There are different levels of energy. One can't fit in the other's socket without not working or blowing up. Right. So they stick in their own realm. Oh, let's see. Uh, funniest thing a spirit has told you. Gosh, there's so many Jeez. funny things, right? Yeah. But the one that stood out to me when I saw this question was the other night you went uh, on a pet sit with me and you you sat in the car and <laughs> it's one that I've talked about. This, I've talked about this guy before that he's the oh. one that made the light bulb go on me after yeah. telling me the house was haunted. So he talks to me every time I'm there. He's like on me. This so, is his mother's house. This is his mother's house. He he committed suicide and died uh, a couple house. years ago. He didn't, I don't think he committed suicide okay. in that house. But this was his house growing up. So he's gotcha. always there, um, especially when they're gone. Yes. So I walk in the house the other night, and the first thing he says is, tell your husband he's really cute. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was gay. Sorry, maybe I should have said that. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> Helpful. He was gay and very eccentric yeah. and um, into drama a lot, like that kind of stuff. So he's very funny. Uh, he makes me laugh a lot. Well, I kindly thanked him out loud for the compliment. <laughs> yeah. But they do say some very funny things. Yeah, I laughed when he said that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll I'll laugh like I'll just be sitting around and all of a sudden laugh and I'll have to tell you like what the spirit said. Yeah. I should write this stuff down, but they are very funny. That was a good one. So this is a funny question, and I think I know who, who said this question. What is your favorite Lizzo song? <laughs> is it, I just took a DNA test. Oh, no. Turns out, you know, that whole song. Yeah. Okay, so no, that's not my favorite Lizzo song. And I know that this was brought up because we talked about her last week. So this, was, this person that's said, this talked person. about Lizzo last week. But this is a funny story, and that's why I, I brought this question in, because I've talked about in the past how sometimes I'll hear something and it sounds stupid, and I will be like, oh, that's the worst idea ever. So when I heard Lizzo, Truth Hurts, the first time, I was like, what is this? Because I love Lizzo, <laughs> and I love her song, Juice. That's my favorite song. We saw her on Tyler Henry, and then I hear Truth Hurts, and I was like, oh, honey, why are you doing this? This is the worst song. 
You're ruining your career. I'm never going to listen to this song. <laughs> no, I like the song. Yeah, it's, you got sucked in. I got sucked in, and it's like a number one hit. And But see, that's what happens. I don't understand. Maybe one day they'll explain to me why they play those little psychological games, why I'm like shown things like that. Mm -hmm. It's weird. I don't know. That happens to me a lot. But that's why I kept that because I thought that was a good example mm -hmm. of, yeah, how things like that happen. So let's see. We've got a lot more here, but we're we running out of time. We can go a few minutes <laughs> over if you want, but it's up to you. Let's see. Well, what else do I have that was kind of like, um, oh, here, this one was good. Um, your favorite meal that your mother cooked when you were a child. Nicole asked this question. <sighs> Well, I'll tell you mine while he's thinking of his. My mom loved to cook Thanksgiving and Christmas turkey. And she would start very early in the morning. I grew up thinking that this process needed to start at 6 o'clock in the morning and took all day. Right. She would clean that turkey with soap and water. Like, I don't understand why. And I would be up in my room hearing her scream down about downstairs about how gross it was to clean a turkey and all of this. And... It, those are some funny memories and every time I eat turkey that's what I think of and she made one hell of a turkey and Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner yeah so that's mine for sure yeah I don't know what the favorite I, my first memory of like the smell of onions cooking was with my mom obviously I didn't like them that young I love them now but I thought wow for something that doesn't taste that good they smelled so good cooking but I would say the favorite meal, um, which happens ironically, one of the favorite meals she made, happens to be kind of one of used to be one of Marina's favorites. Was my mom used to make kind of beef stroganoff with like chuck steak, and she'd cut it up into pieces and then use like a mushroom sauce. But instead of over like egg noodles, she'd put it over white rice, mm -hmm. and I just loved that all the time. So when I would make it for Marina. I'm not really a good cook, but that was one thing that she would always say. I like the way dad yeah. makes it better than mom, you know? So yeah, it's funny. Funny. Yeah. Good memories. I thought that was a really cute question. Yeah. Yeah. I like unique ones. Like they're all unique. But they was, are. Yeah. Like, what? Who thought of that? Yeah. So moving on from those kinds of questions, I asked, uh, what do you enjoy most about the show? And I, so I wanted to share some of these cause these were really cute. Stories about your experiences with communicating with animals or deceased loved ones. So I definitely think we'll have to do more about that. Um, I have, yeah, great stories in that yeah, area do. for sure. Yeah. Um, I love the comedy and the raw moments when you allow us listeners to see into your life. You're relatable and human. Thank you. I love how down to earth you both are and how natural the conversation between the two of you is. The next one says, Everything. It feels like I'm having a conversation with good friends. <laughs> and let's see, the knowledge. You are helping people all over the world by giving them knowledge. Cool. This one says, I love that Samantha and Danny are real. They are approachable and listen to their audience for questions and feedback. The next one says, the information and chatting. It's always great to listen to while I work. The next one says, you cover a wide variety of topics. You do your research on topics and also crowdsource info. I really quite enjoy the polls. I like how you both make the show so relatable. You know, the polls was an, it was a mom idea. Um, and I at first I thought it was a little bit dumb like I always do. Right. But I, I think it makes sense. It sets us a little bit apart. It gets our listeners involved in the process instead of just throwing Great a show idea. at them once a week. Yeah. Yeah. you got to listen to those right. spirits. They make a lot of sense. Uh, and then the last one on this says, your personalities and the topics are very interesting. Also, you both are very down to earth and funny. Thank you. Yes. You gave me tears. That made me feel good. I When I first read these, it was very emotional for me because when we started this, I mean, we still don't really know where it's going, but right. this came as an idea that from my mom that I put off and put off and put off. And finally we were like, okay, maybe we should just do it. Right. You know? And I'm glad we did. Yeah. I am. I'm glad that it's Don't doing... be scared. People that do things, you know, take chances and yep. put, you know, wear your heart on your sleeve in the right way and, and uh, shower the people you love with love. Well, if you like those... Here's some more for you because these are any messages that are any last things that they wanted to say after this survey. Cool. And 
it's funny because the very first one is Don't Stop Believing. Uh -huh. And that's a song that is a mom song for me. And I heard it after reading this. I heard it in the car. That was like one of the next songs that I heard. So it was definitely, I feel like somebody got that little tap to right. say that. Oh, I feel that every day. I yeah. feel it. I mean, I, trust me, there's days where, you know, I think you and I both are like, I don't want to feel yeah. the emotion. I don't want to be connected. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get up. Right. I don't um, want to do this every and day. Yeah. Something just keeps like it's that voice. It's that connection. The same one I get when I'm painting or I'm trying to write a song or it's they're guiding me. I just have to listen. Right. Exactly. Okay, so after that, um, it said, I look forward to your show each week. Nice. Yes. Um, this one, I think we know who sent this, but we may be wrong. Sound quality is better. I'm not a huge fan of the intro song. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know who did that. Yeah, we know who did that. And we're not changing your song, Adam. <laughs> no, it's okay. just a matter of... Uh, uh, you know, it kind of it's a it's a poignant <laughs> statement taste, yeah. that I really like in that lyric, and it's not just because I'm performing on that song, or that Rob's performing on that song, or Sean. Um, I love Adam as a person. I love his music, but I really love that statement. That yeah. opening statement to me is like, I'm tired of being swallowing what's been shoved down my throat for so long yeah. and what to believe in when it doesn't really matter because it's all your perception anyways. Yep. True that. You're right. We're all going to the same place. Yes, we are. And if there's one thing that I would tell you with this episode um, is that's it. We're mm -hmm. all going to the same place. That's what I've learned. The biggest thing right. that I've learned through this. So, yeah. so that's what I loved about the, that first line was the yeah. only real God is the one that you believe in. Yep. That might make pe a lot of people cringe. I'm sorry. It is what it is. But again, yeah. that's the only person that yeah. said that. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a couple more here or a few more. The show is amazing. You guys should be proud of yourselves. You're inspiring others to care for each other and the earth. Nice. Very sweet. Keep doing what you do. We need you. Um, you two have great chemistry. Keep this. You keep the show entertaining. Love hearing it while I work and drive. Uh, this one says, thank you for sharing your gifts with us and the world. I see the passions in you both to spread the truth. I wasn't sold on the whole idea of psychics until I got to know your show. You're not actors. You're not selling anything. You're so down to earth. How could I not become a believer? Thank you for opening my eyes. Nice. Yes. That was a good one. That one got me. That was a good one. Okay. And then this one, we'll go out with this one, is Danny, we need your music on a Spotify playlist. <laughs> I think I know that. I do too. too. <laughs> because that was followed by, Samantha, you're going to make it big one day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, yes, everybody, thank you. for those sweet comments and for yes. all your questions. It brought tears to both of our eyes, for it, sure. Music will be on Spotify soon. I can't say <laughs> when, but, you know... Yeah. Again, 2020 is the year, and yeah. a lot of wonderful things have been transpiring, um, and a lot of work has been put into building something um, in both of our lives. So um, yeah. we're just happy to be here to do it. And to share it. Yeah. Yeah, and that you guys are interested in listening to us ramble and talk about ourselves, because right. I honestly thought that we were going to be boring, but hey, right. you love us. What well, yeah. was that, Sally Fields? Was that she did like uh, an Oscar? You love me. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. We're talking like eighty five. Oh, I think I remember. I don't that. know what I'm talking about. But Acceptance yeah. speech. You yeah. love me. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. you know what? If I, if we go down this path and we fall on our face and fail, it's okay. At least we tried. We tried. Yep. And you know, a lot of people go, oh, "They're crazy, man. They're going to put this on the, the web and you know, <laughs> talking microphones and yeah, just and talk about dirty stuff, laundry, you know, and, but yeah." Um, maybe that's what needs to happen more in the world is people need to start talking to each other. You they know? do. There's a lot of things that we don't talk about. And I get told often, like I've always talked about that I'm going to write books. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get told often about some of the subjects that are going to be in my books. And I'm like, I can't talk about that. 
Well, no, you have to because nobody else is. Right. You have to talk about it because people need to start. Yeah, it's not always easy, you no. know, but it, once you make that first step, it gets better. Yep. So, And we really hope, you know, for you people, well, first of all, anybody that listens, thank you whether you commented or you didn't. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and to anybody that took the time to write a comment or a question, thank you yes, so much. Thank you. It makes me feel like, um, wow. Yeah. Very honored. We're doing very, this for a flattered. reason. So thank mm-hmm. you. It, it feels like it's worth it. Even if there would have been one question there, yeah, I would have been okay. But I didn't there even was get much to half more. of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, I could do a whole other episode. We'll save them and we could maybe do it again. Yeah, for sure. And just do part two or something. We'll call this one part one. Yeah, we did do we did get a lot of great show suggestions for things to do in the future. Right. That we'll be doing, too. Yeah. So, yeah, um, we just hope that maybe you can get something from this people and go into 2020. Believing in something, finding your path um, and writing it because yeah. this this whole thing the good the bad the ugly everything that comes with this life is still a gift it is every single piece of it even the stuff that sucks the most it's still yep. a gift when we lose people that's hard but that's yep. part of this gift it is it's a huge part of this right. gift and it's it's the hardest one probably mm-hmm. really having people taken from us and not understanding it you know um but it, it makes yeah. that reconnection on the other side so amazingly bittersweet. Yeah, it does. So, and it, it will happen. Anybody, any animal you've lost, anybody you've lost, you will see them again. Yes, definitely. Have no fear. There was one question in here that says, um, if there's one thing, that, like the most important thing you've learned through this, and I think that that's it, is that... I don't fear death anymore. It's not about the fact that I'll be with my mom when I get there. That's wonderful. I I can't wait for that. I'll be with everybody Mm -hmm. again and it'll be glorious. And you, for me, I know that Mm -hmm. for you, I think you know that now. And it's hard when you don't have this direct connection to believe that. But I swear to you on everything that I have, Mm -hmm. don't fear death, please Mm -hmm. trust me. No, none of us look forward to the process, but once you're gone, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. If I'm Wait. lying, you can haunt me when you get there. If I'm still here, how's that? That's a great deal. Yeah, yeah I'll take you up on that one. <laughs> yeah, you. We've already <laughs> talked about this. I'd be like sitting down, eating dinner by myself, talking to you in the spirit form. People think I'm crazy. It'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, good. Well, that was really cool. That was fun. It was fun. Maybe we should do, maybe in, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks, do a part two with I think the so. other ones. Yeah. But really great feedback. Thank you, people. Yes. Thank you so, so much. much. Um, and we hope that you could start this off year great. Yeah. And I hope the best for everybody. Yes. Um, Health, wealth, happiness in 2020, whatever brings you happiness yeah yep. you can make it happen yep you just have to believe and this is part of it you know True that. um don't know, stop believing it's all little pieces you know the kindness and the and the belief and the faith and you know all that it's it's yep. important we can't forget it because all we have is each other on this side and over there yep so you make very valid points sir well, we hope everybody had a good time. Yes, I did. we did. I hope everybody had an awesome holidays. Yep. And we hope everybody has a great year. That we do. Had a great week. That we do. And until next week, peace and love.